Greetings, everybody. This is Morning Eggnog. My name is James Font. With me, as always, Caleb Font and a very special guest, Joel Font. Yep. Say good morning. Good morning. There we go. He's my brother. That's my cousin. We like to do Keep family. Uh, we don't really invite anybody else to nobody, the podcast. Well, nobody else wants to get up at six. That's true. But yeah, yeah. this is this is being filmed at six o five a.m. in the morning. Yeah. On a Monday. We like our so mornings. I have, to, I have to go to work and change in about an hour. And I get to go to school and learn about electrical theory. Are you excited about electrical theory? Yes and no. Some of it's interesting and some of it's like, oh my gosh, my brain is hurting right now so bad. That's electrical. (laughs) So Joel, where do you live? I live in Glenville, New York. Glenville, New York. Now, is that super awesome? And how far away are you, how far away from New York City are you? So we're about three to three and a half hours from north of New York City. We're actually just northwest of Albany, New York, which is the state capital. Okay. Um, trying to think of other interesting things. So Glenville is a very interesting place. In some ways, it feels very uh, modern and you know up to date. And then in others, it's like, are we still in the fifties? Oh. <laughs> so men are beating their wives. <laughs> Not that kind of fifties. Oh, 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 wrong kind of fifties. I think he's talking about architecture. Oh, uh, gotcha. More like white, like the, the attitude of people is white picket fences and. Oh well, that's definitely interesting. Protectionism. Why are you wearing children. sunglasses, Caleb, on your shirt? Because by the time I leave this place, the sun is up and it's bright. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> I'm gonna hide your hangover from last night. <laughs> that's exactly right. My hangovers. I your have hangover lots of those. Of your child, your child hangover. Oh, now that that could very well be. So, Caleb, do you want to start us off? Yeah, sure. Uh, I was uh, perusing. <laughs> this is a great story. I was looking through, and uh, I saw this particular article. It's from uh, w- WBNS. Uh, it would be BNS. CBS 10 TV. And they had an article from Clay County, Missouri. So you know it's already getting good when we're in Clay, Clay County, County, Missouri. Clay County, Missouri. Authorities in Missouri were able to sniff out a suspect that was hiding from the, uh, hiding from them after he passed gas. So, a gentleman decided that he wanted to run from the cops, and as they were searching for him, he broke wind loud enough that it, he, they caught him. <laughs> I I have no words. <laughs> I could just imagine being that cop and being like, <laughs> exactly. And he wouldn't even need a dog. What if it wasn't the noise? Oh, that would be even worse. That he, was just, he just ate at Tony Paco's the <laughs> night before. Tony Paco's? Paco's. Sorry, I said the wrong thing. You no, know, you said Tanny. Tanny, whatever. But yeah. But anyways, I, 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 was, I was thinking, I'm like, you know, if a font, if there was any way a font was going to get caught by the police, it would probably be this way. You just got to stop drinking milk and then you'll be fine. Yeah. For I us. don't know if that's true. <laughs> oh yeah? How would you get caught? I believe it includes milk, cabbage, beans, uh, broccoli. Onions. <laughs> we can, we can There's even... many foods that Font should probably not eat. Oh, in pepper order jack to cheese reduce. should be. Pepper yeah. jack cheese is the main one of the yeah, main ones. Yeah, yeah. Stay one because that's like a that's like the triple combo. Mm-hmm. You have peppers, Pe- pepper jack. peppers, meat, meat. What a kind of cheese that's am I good, eating? That's good pepper jack cheese though. If you have meat in your cheese. Oh yes. Or have you ever had maple or bacon the, cheese? They stuff the stuff into sticks. Like they stuff sticks. the stuff in the cheese. If meat stick chicks. with the cheese stick, <laughs> exactly. Them together, it's so delicious. It is delicious. But anyways, so yeah, this gentleman got caught. Um, let's see. Yeah, I, that's what I posted on Facebook. I was like, you know, if I was anyway, I would probably get caught by the police. This would probably be it. Now the question is, why are you running from the police? Um, I stole a jumbo Hershey bar. Sounds like a plan. Not not the not the king size, but like the hundred dollar, hundred dollar, two you know two pound Hershey bar. There we go. That's a good stuff from a small child, the president's <laughs> child, the president's small Trump, small Trump. Is that what's really in that important briefcase? It's president? just a giant Hershey bar, <laughs> giant five giant pound Hershey, Hershey bar. bar. <laughs> that's all. That's all the president cares. Three right? of them. Three of them. It's important. It's huge. It's gonna be huge. <laughs> All right, so I have the 50 worst summer movies, according to Rotten Tomatoes, of all time. Hot Pursuit, made in 2015, with a 7% on Rotten Tomatoes. Hot Pursuit. Who, who's in that one? It sounds Shrill really familiar. Shrill and unfunny, Hot Pursuit, ball, 
bun, bun, bungles what should have been an easy opportunity to showcase Reith, Reese Witherspoon and Sophia Vergara's likable oh. odd couple chemistry. Okay, yeah, I, know, I thought I sounded familiar. So. so Reese Witherspoon. This one I'm assuming you can concur with. The Last Airbender, made in 2010. Yep. You got a problem, Joel? Anyways. Uh, with a whopping 5%, according to the critics, the critics' consensus, The Last Airbender squanders its popular source material with uncomprehensible plotting and horrible acting. It was... it. Airbender is supposed to be funny and kind of lighthearted. It was super serious. I think I started it because you talked about the show so much. Yeah. And other people have told me about the show so much that I... Uh, I started watching the movie because you know that's where you, that's the best thing to start off with is if you want to if you want to read a book watch the movie first it'll make it so much better. Yes, this is a true theory. I actually completely agree with that. Um, also, they, did you know that Netflix is actually coming out? I did see that with, somewhere. The Last Airbender. It might not series. be Netflix. It might be um, Amazon. Okay. But they're coming out with a live action actually created by the writers. Hmm. So I'm really excited to see this come out. I think it's going to be um, a good representation of the show. That'd be cool. The Perfect Man, Teenage Holly, Holly doesn't Hampton. Exist. Hmm? Doesn't exist. No, he doesn't. Neither does a perfect woman or a perfect baby um, or a perfect teenager. Babies are close. Most Have you ever babies. smelled a baby? Hmm? Smelling a baby when they're freshly born is weird. It's like they smell different. Freshly born like when they're dunked in motor oil? Yes, because all children are dunked in motor oil. Well, that's what they look like, I've been told. When they first come out. Oh, we're not going to talk about when they first come out. <laughs> you mean when they've first been born and have been cleaned. Exactly. <laughs> That's not motor oil. <laughs> That's not motor oil. <laughs> well, it was, a to- it was a Bob Smiley joke. He said, it looks like a veg tail dunked in motor oil. <laughs> no, that's what he said. The perfect man, uh, pretentious and predictable. The perfect man manages few laughs with its poorly paced sitcom script, cookie cutter characters, and contrived plotting. Okay. What did it get? It got a whopping 6% on Rotten Tomatoes. Ooh, goody for them. That's Pandora, 2013, 7%. Cliché and unoriginal. I don't know. I, Babylon AD. I did actually hear about this. This is a Vin Diesel movie with a whopping 6% made in 2008. A poorly constructed dro- yeah. derivative sci-fi stinker. With a weak script and poor action sequences. Mobsters, 1991, with a whopping 6%. It's had time to stay at 6%. It's had 19... time to mature, and it hasn't. It's like this... a fine wine, but it's never gone fine. This is a movie I've never heard of. Son of the Pink Panther. I've heard of that. I've never heard of that. Uh, 1993, a whopping 6%. i to quit saying a whopping. Uh, Roberto ben Benghazi. Ben Benghazi. Ben... Ben G, how do you say that, Joel? You're good at words. Benini. Cool. Is, <laughs> is an undeniably gifted psychic. Co- psychic? It's physical. <laughs> it's okay, James. We all believe in you. He has a whopping big brain. He sure does. Son of the Pink Panther, Roberto Ben Benini, is an undeniably gifted physical comic. But the misguided pink son of Pink Panther betrays the electric effort with a painfully unfunny script. No. That day. Oh well. A Smile Like Yours, 1997, 6%. Polly Shore, or in the, I'm sorry, Polly Shore in the Army Now, 1994, with a whopping 6%. That sounds like a terrible title to begin with. It does. Polly, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. 92 of the best winners. We could do that too. So yeah, those are those are just a few. I don't know. Well, that wasn't a 50 list. It said it was 50, but it was only that was it. Hmm. So there's been a lot of movies out there that have been terrible. According to a video I watched, the new Lion King is only rated like 66 percent, or like 50 percent. It's still on track to make a billion dollars. Well, it's gonna make a billion dollars because of nostalgic reasons, but I don't think it's gonna be a good movie according to this one thing I will listen to, so who knows if that's true or not. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be one of those one watch, you're done. Yeah. But I mean, if you get enough people doing one watch, you're done. It's If you, you get, get you know, half a billion people. How many small girls are at your house, Caleb? Three. We only watch classics, though. <laughs> you say that. <laughs> I know. I know. So you might 
only want to watch it once. That's true. But they get freaked out by live action ones yet. Interesting. Interesting. Do you know how many times my wife and I have watched Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? <laughs> I watched I've it three lost times. Count. I watched it three times. Oh, gosh. Lost my count. Own. I know. You've I lost wish count. it was only three. Well, yeah, but that's such a good movie. It, it You can keep watching it over and over again. I have not seen it yet. Oh, Caleb. Travis. It's a good, good film. Good film. It's very good. Uh, Trolls was one we watched a lot of. That would make me want to die. We watched a lot of Iron Man. It would that Moana was popular at our house Moana for quite was a while. Fun. I heard Trolls to too. I like I saw the video for Trolls too, and it made me laugh because they're bringing in like all the different genres of music. I guess. Um, I thought the concept was kind of weird. the The show itself is kind of weird. What am I saying? The thing about Trolls is it's weird. <laughs> in the first one, they're eating them. <laughs> it's a little psycho, right there. Yeah, you know. And music like the makes box it. trolls too. Yeah, but anyway. I think that's why I got so confused with all the things that came out because it was box trolls, trolls, uh, Gomeo and Juliet. Have you noticed they come out in in groups? Kinda. Like they that it seems like each couple of years they come out with kind of a series or like a a theme for movies. Yeah, because it's and they just kind of throw it at the wall and see if it sticks. Now, well, yeah, unless you're, a lot of them are unless, unless you're Disney, unless you're Disney, and you go, hey, you remember that thing? We're gonna redo it. Oh, you know Toy Story four? It's now a thing. Yeah, Toy Story four. They gotta well, sell those toys. I know my daughter has a shirt for Toy Story four, and I didn't even know Toy Story three was over with. <laughs> it's kind of weird. It's only been out a couple of years. This is what happens when you have a real job. Okay, it's not really a real job. It's just a job. This is what happens when you have a 40-hour work week, at least. I said at least. I know you work way more. <laughs> you work a disgusting By amount. Somewhat choice. By somewhat choice. Not, it's not too bad. I think I'm like 48 hours average. It's not bad. That's not horrible. No. I just remember for a stint, he was working 12-hour days, seven days a week for, I think, did you do that two weeks in a row or three weeks in a row? Or how long did you do that? For a month? No, not that long. Okay. I, I haven't done that for two or three years. I know it's been a while, but that a few years back I worked a year like that. I was averaging about sixty hours a week. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are those guys who are like, "Yeah, I work ninety hour weeks." I'm like, "Do you have any life outside of work?" No, but I have like money <laughs> that I spend you on know. alcohol. So Can I you know. do anything with your money? Because you're not home. And it's well, good for you if you work that many hours. There are certain ways to afford certain substances that are expensive and not necessarily <laughs> legal. <laughs> You could also just move to Colorado. Yeah. Although many places, uh, Massachusetts. It's still expensive even if it's legal. That's not necessarily true. It's not the same level of expense, I don't believe. Mm, I don't know. I don't think we've done the... Plus, my, my my neighbors on all sides uh, at one time or another have moved out and moved in and uh, have done m- many things. My one neighbor who's now in the Army... Uh, Sometimes that's a way to end up in the army. Yeah, true. But he did he did <laughs> coke in front of me. That was weird. <laughs> the judge says so. The judge, the judge says so. No, he didn't he didn't he didn't get to that point. Anyway. Right, so Joel, what did you bring with you? So it took me a little while because I had to set up a login and password and all that. But <clears throat> since I'm from out of state, I thought I would bring one of my favorite out of state things from the other font that's coming in. Uh, the Bozeman Daily Blotter. Ooh, <laughs> so these are, it's great. These are police reports from Bozeman, Montana. Uh, they publish them. They actually have a book if you're interested. Uh, we can't make this stuff up. No, it gets stupid. So, recently. Caleb, so have is, you never been exposed to this? I have not been exposed to you. I'm actually really excited this right is now. The, so when did you first find this, Joel? I found this when we took Rachel to school in Bozeman in 2010. 2010. No, 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 in Bozeman was 2000. Oh, so she oh, went out right, to the right. camp in 2010 where Caleb attended. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then in 2013, she went out to the That's school. That's what I was there. Well, there were two, yeah, so here's the police report for July 11th, 2019. Not that, far, not that long ago. People were yelling and hollering in a yard. A caller said this was an ongoing problem. An officer checked on a driver slumped over an idling car. The driver was napping while waiting for his friend to finish work. <laughs> now, Joel, haven't you had experiences with sleeping in parking lots? We'll talk about that in a second. Okay. <laughs> a man behind his house in a business parking lot was playing loud music. 
changing clothes and acting weird. <laughs> Officers responded Excuse to... Excuse me, this guy's acting weird. 159 calls, and these were the best ones. I'm a little worried. Officers respond. Uh, there were no reports from the Gallatin County, which is where Bozeman is located. And the Gallatin County Jail held six, 161 inmates on Friday. So that's just a small slice, right? They have 365 days to get the same type of reports. But they've collected all of these into a book uh, called We Don't Make This Stuff Up, the very best of the world famous Bozeman County Chronicle is that a Police sequel? Reports. Probably. I can't. Either that or one of them's in color and one of them isn't. Yeah, one's red versus, and it's red and blue, so maybe it's red versus blue <laughs> articles. I, I highly recommend it because this was just a you know a normal day. Uh, they have some really... I think there was one with a moose. There was one with a moose, one with a goat. <laughs> there was one with a dude screaming about the world's going to end. They were just... Some of them are very entertaining, and it makes me pity police officers a little bit. Oh, yeah. I They've got a tough job. Well, one time I was fixing a gas line under a trailer, and the cops were there because the tenant was being belligerent, or excuse me, the tenant's son was being belligerent, and uh, he was completely, probably blackout drunk, trying to explain to the police that he did not hit her. (laughs) I couldn't hear the whole conversation, but I was underneath the trailer in cobwebs and whatnot, and they are standing right above me, and he's, they're like, come on, sit down in the bed. He's like, I, okay, I don't even know, man. (laughs) And uh, yeah, it you really was, should. Have, you really should have knocked. I said, "Help me, help me!" Just to. <laughs> I didn't want to get in trouble, Caleb. <laughs> I've I've never understood how many many people don't understand. Closer. No, just do a boop. There you yes. go. So the the man yeah. don't understand that drunk cops equal silence. That's the smart way to go. But when you're drunk, it's hard to be smart. I understand that. <laughs> Don't talk to the cops. It's usually better. <laughs> It'd just be so awkward. Somebody standing there asking you questions and you just staring there. It just feels so awkward. It does feel awkward. Have you guys ever seen the video where... I feel like my mom would kill me because that was Probably. one thing. Like I was never allowed... Like, if I was asked a question, I had to answer it or I was being rude. Well, Joel, when he lived at home, had a buzzer on uh, on his... Oh, I remember that. Had a dad installed a buzzer for his that room. That wasn't for me. Oh, who was that for? That was <laughs> for originally Joel? was for Jonathan. For Jonathan. Okay. I think all four of us children eventually needed it. <laughs> because mom uh, didn't like our doors to be shut. Because she couldn't get a hold of us instantaneously. We apparently had a controlling mother, I think. <laughs> She like all moms like to have the kid, the children respond she immediately. Wanted, she wanted us to respond immediately from anywhere in our house. We lived in a barn. <laughs> it was huge with many sections, many doors in between. And if you <laughs> finalize that last door shut to your room and you don't respond within zero point two seconds, you got yelled at. And so Joel and Jonathan had a buzzer on the on the on the door. Well, not on the door, but it was downstairs because we lived in, as I said, a barn and all the bedrooms were up in the loft. And mom had a buzzer downstairs that she would buzz and then you would open the door frantically like, what do you want, mom? And then it got disabled and uh, mom threatened to take uh, my uh, door off its hinges because I wasn't responding fast enough. (laughs) I also got in trouble because I put a knife in the door just because I wanted to. These are things I don't know about. Well, yeah, you moved out. This is the youngest was child a, syndrome. I was the youngest slash only child because everybody moved out, and then I had free reign of everything. I also got all the cool stuff. You got all the cool stuff. There's nothing like hand me downs. Um, I just I love hand me downs, maybe because that's just how I grew up. That like when Joel, but you had and, older sisters. Yes, but I also had lots of male cousins, which was oh. a lifesaver. <laughs> I thought we were gonna say you start wearing tutus. I have worn tutus. Well, probably not tutus, but I have worn dresses before. But it I was, have too because it wasn't consensual from my sister. You, I'm pretty sure if you've had an older sister, you've worn a dress. If you haven't, uh, your sister didn't like you. There's photographic evidence. Oh, yes. there's all kinds. I don't know where yeah. it is, but it's somewhere. So let's see if Caleb remembers uh, what item of clothing I used to throw at him uh, when we were trying to go to sleep at night. Socks. When he was little. 
Was there anything specially wrong with these socks, Caleb? Usually you've worn them for several weeks. Days. Days, not oh. weeks. Oh, that was your sister. That was that was Rachel. She wore them for weeks. Oh, that's right. She didn't have his stinky feet, or she did and just well, she did. They were just with it. crusty she, socks. They were they <laughs> Yeah, when Rachel wore her, when Rachel threw your socks, it was like an atomic little atomic explosion would hit. <laughs> I had very nasty smelling smelling feet for a very long time until I changed my diet, and started eating a little healthier, and now I don't smell as bad. Yeah, then you get older, and that changes too. Yeah, did your wife tell you you had to? Kind of. And one time I was at a uh, I was at a sleepover, <laughs> and it smelled like someone stepped in dog poop. And it was just my feet. Was there dog poop involved? No. <laughs> That's pretty bad, James. It was really bad for like a minute. And then I realized I'm gross. And so I think I took better care Did of Did you realize what you were eating that caused? I don't know. Probably not. I, Whatever. My wife made me stop drinking cow milk. <laughs> so an interesting aside to all of this is the way I solved this whole problem for myself not really solved, but my sense of smell just kind of stopped working for about two years. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't smell it anymore. No, that's a way to solve your problems. That's a way to solve it. There's some downsides to this. One, I get dirty looks from my wife occasionally because, well, my breath smells, my feet smell, I farted. Lots of reasons. <laughs> some of that's normal because you're just married. Some of that, well, I can't smell it, so I don't know. Part two, I've gotten <laughs> lots and lots of diaper duty because Ooh. I can't smell it and nobody else wants to do it. When you have a small child, that's what happens. Yeah, you should try no. twins on for size. No. Oh my gosh. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> He's like, nope, mo, no more. I give. But what I'm getting at is it, it has been a lot easier for me to change diapers because I remember doing it as a kid with certain small children. Yeah, it was cute. Anyway. You uh, fit in a shoe. I did. It was I was a little five hard. pounds. Occasionally, it'd make you uh, want to vomit a little bit, but I no longer have that problem. I'm just like, eh, I'm going to get it done. <laughs> it's soil. So one time, uh, I was at a lady's house. Again, I'm a plumber, if you didn't realize this already. I had to, the toilet wasn't flushing, and I had to run an auger through it, and it still wasn't flushing, so I had to take it off. And in, in the bottom of the toilet was a fist of uh, feces that was not moving whatsoever. And so I had to take a scraper and scrape it out. And that was pretty, that was pretty fun. And the lady was like, how are you, what, are you okay? <laughs> are you okay? And I was like, yeah, it's fine. This is fine for me. It's vomit that makes me want to, want to vomit. Okay. Okay. I can't, if, for some reason, fecal matter is, is, is it's this not white? okay. For me, it's not. Like that, that I can do poop. I hope I can you do blood are really guts, enjoying this podcast. But it's, it's not that gets me. It's not as pretty gross. I have a question. Yes. Is this why you're doing electrical theory and not uh, mechanical Plumbing. theory, Caleb? Uh, yeah, yes. Because I went with James on a, uh, when I worked with Kevin's, <laughs> I went with James on a, a little expedition to- We had to replace a bunch of cast iron pipe above us. That, yeah. So we were opening these suckers up and it was, I'm going, yeah, I'm glad I'm going into HVAC and <laughs> not plumbing. I don't think you dry heaved, at least not in front of me. No, I never dry heaved. I'm pretty good with stink, but I'm still like, you know, I don't really want to go home smelling like this to my wife. Yeah, I've had to take my clothes off in the garage a few times. Yet again, I have a solution. Just shut off the nose. I, <laughs> I do that sometimes. You won't be able to go home, but... Yeah, I mean, you, it is possible to not smell it anymore. Like when you work at a pig farm or somewhere like that, you, you don't smell it anymore, but everybody else, they, yeah. They, they definitely can. smell it. And then you feel self-conscious that you might smell bad. And so then you just hide from society. And that's why I'm a, I'm a hermit. Other downsides. Someone left the stove on and I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> My wife wakes up in the middle of the night. What happened? I don't know. What's wrong? I smell gas. It wasn't me. No, no, no. The gas from the stove. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it, it's been on for an hour and I have no idea. Like, oh my goodness! Yeah, it's it. It can get bad. That is a downside, especially be again being a plumber. Sometimes you have to go in and find gas leaks, and uh, you can't smell them. Yeah, that's why you would when, take the little whenever, detector. Whenever whenever there's a whenever there's a woman in the house who says she smells something, I go, well, this is going to be a lot harder than it should be, because <laughs> if a guy can smell it, I can probably smell it. But women have great sniffers. Most of them. My wife, she can. This is the thing about my wife. She can only smell the stinky. Interesting. 
So if if I smell, she can smell it. But if I smell nice, she she can't really smell it because she has allergies. So it makes things difficult sometimes. Have you ever found any uh, anything that's uh, non? She doesn't have reactions to. This might be your mission for the next two years: is finding a cologne that she likes. That's think, that's the hard part. Yeah, I don't. She's know. not allergic to cotton candy. Everybody likes cotton candy. She might like cotton candy. I do I mean, remember my mom. Girly, but my mom could smell cat pee from a mile away. That's interesting. Ammonia, or was it cat pee specifically? It's specifically cat pee, because we had cats in the house for a while, and so she would walk around and pretty soon she'd be like, "I smell cat pee." You're like, like where? Oh gosh, you're, mom, not you're again! Tearing. Those jerks. Because then we got to go on a hunt for the cat pee and try to cleanse it in the house, <laughs> like an exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> the cleansing. So we none of us could smell it except mom, so it was it was kind of a interesting endeavor. It's just Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Good morning, so, Elizabeth. All right. So what should we what else should we talk about here, Joel? Well, what else do you have to bring to the table? You're um, the important one here. I I don't have a whole lot. I mean, can we talk about your job? I do radiation protection training. It's not that exciting, except it actually relates to the fact that you can't see it, taste it, smell it. Touch it. Well, you can touch it, but so it actually relates a lot to the whole description of what your mother was doing. <laughs> is that we send other people to go, um, you know, wipe off the, the contamination off of things, but they can't see it, taste it, smell it. They have to bring it to us. Okay. And we have to check it to see did we get it. So their job is spe- specifically to go clean it up. Mm-hmm. Oh, that would be hard. But you can't see it or taste it, and it also or just it. like destroys smell your it. atoms. No. Is there any kind of equipment that can sense it so that kind of yes, give them an idea? But it's a limited, there's a limited supply. So usually only certain personnel carry the equipment. <laughs> and it doesn't work in the areas we want it to because of. And I'm guessing you can't just use wet wipes to clean it up. <laughs> I mean, not, not those kind of wet wipes usually, but no, we'll, we'll get rags and we'll dampen them with water and that's what we go clean with. Really? Yeah. And that can clean up radiation? No. Oh. You. I'm confused now. Is that what you, you were we'll thinking? We'll talk more about this offline. Oh, okay. But, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I just don't, I need to go look up materials, so I'm not pointing them in the wrong direction. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I don't think we're going to be cleaning up any radiation, hopefully, anytime so, soon. So, I sure hope not, unless we get nuked by Radiation someone. and contamination are two different things that uh. often do the same thing. So, radiation is the energy given off, so it's like when you have a baby and it smells. It's Even radi- if you clean it up, that smell follows the cleanup equipment hmm. into the trash, but you can still smell it. That's like radiation. It's still there. Even if you clean it up, it's just where you want it to be now. The contamination is, well, where the stink is coming from. Okay. You're wiping the contamination off because you want the radiation to be somewhere else. Got it. Anyway. So Joel has a very interesting job in comparison. Eh. <laughs> he gets paid more. That <laughs> might be true. Uh, the important thing is that it's it's really just I'm a professional cleaner for a a substance you can't see or feel really. And most people are kind of afraid of. Yes, a good comparison would be asbestos. A lot of people are aware of asbestos. Yeah. Um, it's similar. You can't get rid of it if you intake it. You can't really see it. Taste it, smell it. <laughs> Although it's a little easier because you can see where it comes from. But do you deal with asbestos very much, James? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. They're tearing out. I don't know if you noticed. I, they're tearing off the face of the Stryker um, uh, school building. I didn't notice. Um, but they're tearing. They're tearing into it, and they're uh, they're removing asbestos right now from the school. Oh. So that's what they're doing right now at the Stryker school. They're removing asbestos. Uh, and I'm like, that that can't be a super fun job. No, because you have to have so much Because you have equipment. to have training, and you have to have the right equipment, and you have to tent everything off. It's got to be an endeavor. And it, Joel's going, it is. been there. I've I'm actually done that. some asbestos stuff. So one of the interesting things about asbestos is, unfortunately, we, we haven't found anything as good as it at doing what it does. What does it do? So asbestos is, is a, um, a rock is like a fiber. So it's like wool, but it's rock. So 
it's very resistant to chemical uh, chemical interactions, uh, extremely resistant to fire. So asbestos is actually a fireproof. You can make a fabric out of it that's fireproof. Oh, that's cool. So there but was you're a, dying because <laughs> it, you're covered in asbestos. Well, not really. If you go look up the permissible limits for asbestos, it's it's way more than you think. <laughs> I know. I shouldn't look up permissible limits to anything. <laughs> Don't ever do that. You will not like it. Do you want to know how? I think there's a there's a percentage of fecal matter allowed in hot dogs. Fecal matter? There's a percentage of rat fecal matter in your hot dogs. Exactly. So. E. And <clears throat> uh, what's the other? Uh, roach parts. You're allowed to have a certain number of roach parts per per uh, million. Huh. You know, the PPM for roach parts is not zero. There's, there's the right way to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so remember when you're, it's 4th of July weekend, you have your, your, your 100% beef hot dog, you're eating it, it tastes delicious because hot dogs are one of the most, are one of the most <laughs> American tacos or sandwiches you could ever eat. What is a hot dog? There, That's a fun question. What's a hot dog? <laughs> is it a sub? Do you want to hurt someone's feelings? <laughs> oh, no, sure. Have you ever watched a YouTube video for Pink Slime? Yeah. Yeah. I've only seen a little bit of it, and that was enough. I'm sorry if you've never seen it before, but you can go look it up. Yes. But so hot dogs uh, are leftover parts from usually pork. Yes. Or turkey. Normally. And they grind it all up, they mix together, and they put it in little tubes, and they color it a little pink because otherwise it would be this dark gray color. Like what sausages are, but we're used to sausages. Well, no, it, mm. sausage like looks like meat bits where I'm assuming what you're saying is they completely puree it so much that it is just this gray tube. The, vi- the video I saw, yes, and it, it was... Yeah. So you know on Mr. Rogers when he would say, when he would go and see how things are made mm-hmm. with, with Mr. McFeely? <laughs> they never showed a hot dog or a pepperoni or a sausage. That's or... because, according to the arrogant worms, it's the particle board of meat. It is the... <laughs> It is the paradigm board of meat. I like that description. That's exactly... It's a great song. Uh, the Arrogant Worms are can- a Canadian band that just make up random funny songs. You sh- they also came out with um, uh, I'm Going to Kill the Dog Next Door, uh, Rippy the Gator, and talking about eating children. I'm getting some interesting looks right now. Uh, what else? Uh, is that one up. from Florida? The Killer Robots from Venus. Um, well, they're not The Assumption robots. Song, but I don't recommend looking that one up. The Assumption Song... Is an assumption song. You so you assume things are gonna happen. Yeah. Uh what else? There oh the the last Saskatchewan pirate. Last Saskatchewan. I think I have heard of that one. He's a farmer and uh he runs out of money and they take his, his farm, so he becomes a pirate on the Saskatchewan River. And he steals fertilizer and crops and stuff from the local farmers. Probably a little bit better than Killdozer, but only a little. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> Do you uh, know about Killdozer? No. Killdozer? Oh, no, I have heard. It's another internet thing. I have seen Killdozer. It's a guy who makes a dozer to kill. Well, not really kill. So there's a, I, I need to look it up. You can look it up. Kill look Dozer. up Killdozer. It's pretty funny. It's a, a guy who got, uh, I've heard a couple stories, but essentially he was, somebody else wanted to buy out his property and he wouldn't sell it. And he kept driving up the price. And so finally they just said, forget it. And the town allowed them to pretty much eminent domain his entrance to his business. Mm. And so he lost all his business uh, to a cement company or something. Um, He got fed up because they just took it from him. Um, It's a mess because he didn't really compromise with them. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the end, they just took it from him anyway. He got really upset and... The way he got back at them is he built a killdozer. He took a bulldozer, put a giant concrete thing around it to protect himself, and then um, that he would never be able to get out of. So he knew this going in. It was a suicide mission, literally. Uh, And then he drove around the town destroying all the town buildings and this other company that took over his land (laughs) with his bulldozer. And they, they tried to snipe him with SWAT team and all this other stuff, and they couldn't do anything. He just destroyed... I think they said 15 different buildings around town, like homes for the people that the town council wow. around, destroyed all their homes. And, so don't piss off certain people. And then he shot himself. It was a very sad story. <laughs> um, Sounds about like the guy that stole the tank. Yeah. Yes. Exactly like that story. Because it's when I say a concrete enclosure around, it was like a foot thick. 
Yeah, I imagine if a sniper bullet can't make it through that, it's, yeah. Yeah, because they make black tip sniper bullets, and those are pretty crazy. It sounds like you've been playing too much Call of Duty. No, I've been watching too much Demolition Ranch. Oh, Demolition Ranch. Who doesn't enjoy a good explosion? Demolition Ranch is a, is a guy who almost at every start of the... Ah. At almost every start of the video goes, so I bought a new gun. Don't tell my wife. Uh, <laughs> we're going to shoot it today. And then he shoots new guns. So I haven't watched a lot of YouTube lately, but the one I remember was always the, the what's the Russian guy who does? Oh, FPS Russia. Y- y- yes. Those, that's the one I enjoy. Did you know he wasn't really Russian? I don't really care. I know. He was I, pretty funny. The guns are large. Well, he almost died like so many times. <laughs> Because, like, he would get an RPG thinking he's far enough back, and a piece of shrapnel would go right past his face, and he's like, well, that was crazy. <laughs> the episode with the pepper spray, that was... I haven't seen that one. He just gets oh. pepper sprayed in the eyes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's... I think it was bear-grade pepper spray. Oh, good Lord. It's not pretty. Because he thinks he got it all out of his eyes. He didn't. Oh, and like the video stops four times, three or four times. Like normally, you know, they stop the video, he cleans his eyes out, and move on. It didn't work. He had to stop <laughs> the video again. Oh gosh, that's one thing I would never. I I would be okay getting tased. I'd rather not, but I would rather get tased than probably pepper sprayed. Because I like my I'd, eyes. Hey, it, or you could soft. do you could do what Supreme Patty does, who is an internet influencer, and. uh have whiskey poured in your eyes along with uh what? Along with lemons. Why? Because of the clout, man. Gosh. That's that's his whole thing. I, we should probably wrap this thing up. Probably. How long are we in now? Uh long enough. I think we're at forty minutes or very close to. And James is done. So okay. you all have a great time. James, watch the chords. I don't want him to lose an ear again. It already made noise when he dropped his headphones. No. no. Anyone is ripping his ears out. James doesn't do a mic drop. He does a headphone drop and then a phone, a phone drop. drop. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I've noticed that James does a ton of hand motions, mm-hmm. and you're just nice. And That's because I don't do know. a little bit of this. I've just been trying to stand here. I've also stand. had to lean back because James will point at Caleb to say something important. Oh, yeah. No, no. Right like that. Yep. Now it looks like I'm Well, the first thing is, is I'm trying to keep the cord off your leg. Because it was rubbing back and forth, and like after a while, like that would annoy me. So oh, it didn't bother me. That's, okay. <laughs> I have a three-year-old. Do you have three under four or three under five? Three under five. I hear oh. four. So is four years old a little bit better? No, because the four, the four. You mean children? Four children or the age of four? The age of four. I've heard is a little better than three. Um, if they don't have somebody to interrogate. What? Hmm. So so we had a five year old who then gets into the face of the three year old says like and then the three year old gets annoyed because the five year old's in it's in their face. So if if they don't have somebody to interrogate, it's not too bad. So then they don't go to the other three year old, and then the other three year old kicks the dog, and then the cat the dog bites the cat, and then the cat goes and tries to get the goldfish, and then the goldfish gets We're angry. We're not and like, reading a child story, James. And like yells at the pirate. I don't know how fish is fish. I don't know how fish yell, but and all because a what was that? <laughs> and all because a walnut dropped or something. All yep. because dad wouldn't answer the well. Why not, dad? Question. Oh, there's a lot of those. Woohoo! The why? The why question. There's a lot of the why questions. So why does this happen? I, I'm not an astrophysicist. <laughs> That's when you have to start making things up. <laughs> when you're not an astrophysicist. Yeah, just just make it up. No. And then they grew up their entire life thinking that that's true. Like, I grew up thinking that arsenic was in apple seeds. It's actually cyanide. Oh, there we go. It's, it's the, the cyanide that's important. But see, I thought it was arsenic, and I've been telling everybody that, and then we someone, actually someone a, called me out on it. We knew a guy who was like, oh, you know what I want to teach my kids when I grow up? I want to reverse everything that they know. That'd be crazy. Like, say that this is blue. blue and exactly. Or, you know what? You want to know how to make serial killers? Do that. <laughs> It doesn't work as well as it used to because of the internet. That is true. Google is. I don't even know. Is Google? I don't know where I was going with that thought. Anyways, let's uh, yeah, let's wrap this thing up. Thank you so much for joining us, Joel. It was a good time. It was a good time, and uh, thank you for joining us, crowd. Yep. The six people that watch this. What? 
I was just going to mess with the light. Um, don't just ignore me. Just Anyways. keep going. You can, check us out on, you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram uh, for updates on what's going on. You can message us there, or you can send us an email at morningeggnog at gmail.com if you want to be on the podcast, have a topic you want us to cover, or if uh, you just want to send us an email. You can listen to us on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. And you can watch us here on YouTube every other Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to every Thursday? Uh, we didn't have enough topics. Oh. You can watch us twice a month. That sounds better. It's like somebody exactly. has kids. Someone has kids and I'm lazy. <laughs> lazy because you only run three podcasts. Just two. Four. Just two. Just two. And video. Yeah. It's, it's fun. fun. So, well, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, thanks for joining us again, Joel. It was good having you. It was and a good time. He lives in New York, so it's I, a pleasure having you. Yeah, it was a good time. We might have uh, Rachel on here, maybe Jonathan. That could, yes. What we could almost do the whole family, and we I could just step out, they, and you could just do the family podcast. And There's not think, enough room in here for that much personality. No, but we're thinking about having uh, his mom and my mom on someday, and that, that might be real fun. Should we have them together? Yeah, we're gonna have them together with <laughs> us in the room because we have four mics. <laughs> We might as well just do that. I don't know if you want to video that one. Maybe just audio. No, we'll do video. <laughs> oh, my God. You are a brave, brave man. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> I think people would really enjoy that. I know I would not, but I think people would oh, people enjoy would, that. People would very much so enjoy I it. I think people would enjoy it because you two are going to get roasted. I, oh, yes. <laughs> very much so. Didn't I tell you that back in 1963... We weren't born in '63. They were ten, they were like nine and ten. Exactly, but that's gonna that's, that's gonna precursor something to us. It's gonna be back in '63 when I was a ten year old. This happened to me, and that's why you're not allowed to play in the street.